registrar at the Spurlock Museum. One of my longtime hobbies is blues dancing. I've been blues dancing for about nine years and social dancing um, even longer than that. Um, so we put together a, an exhibit on blues dance called Blues Dance and its African American Roots. Uh, you can check that out in line or when the COVID-19 emergency is up, uh, come to our museum and see that will be open through November. So today I wanted to talk to you about one of the most unique characteristics of blues dancing, which you don't find in other dances, and that is lag. Lag is a really important characteristic of blues dance. Um, and so lag is the difference between one thing happening and then another. So the difference in time. Um, we like to use lag because it really is called for in the music. Um, music, blues music, often has this nice, ooey, gooey, molassesy feel, kind of a draggy feel to it. Um, and this is done by the musicians um, a little bit with, uh, with bent notes or um, bending pitches. Uh, and this comes out of African American gospel music, African American musical traditions. Um, if you check out Bessie Smith's Empty Bed Blues, um, you can hear that in the singer and in the trombone, the bending of pitches, where they move between uh, notes um, by dragging the pitch up, as opposed to hitting it um, initially, hitting exactly on the note. The other thing that is sometimes done also is the singer, um, in pop songs you'll notice, the singer hits on the beat. The words match the beat, um, but in blues, the singer may carry that sound out or drag it out beyond the, the beat, or may even start before the beat. Um, so that's another characteristic that gives it that uh, ooey gooey molasses -y feel. Um, so we can represent this in our own dance um, in three different ways, um, very specific ways. One is through our step. So we could have the beat happen and then we could step after the beat. We could move one body part and then another body part. Or we could even step after our partner. So our partner steps or moves, and then we step or move. So those are the three ways. So you can explore this on your own. Um, I like to do this initially with a metronome. So you can search for an online metronome um, and uh, it's free. Um, and I'm gonna set mine to 40 beats per minute. So it's super, super slow. And then you can increase the speed um, as you get more and more comfortable with this concept. So one of the first ways to do it is to clap on the beat so that you know that you found the beat. Another thing you can do is just tap your collarbone and tap to the beat. Um, then what you can do is try clapping or tapping after the beat to make sure that you can find uh, that lag. So we'll just do it real quick here. First, you want to listen so that you know that you hear the beat. Then we can try clapping on the beat. Or tapping on the beat. So now, make sure you're actually on the beat, not in front or behind it. Um, now try intentionally clapping or tapping after the beat. Or tapping after the beat. Now let's apply that to our steps. So we're gonna think about pressing off on the beat and landing after. Find it. Step, 
So send your hip and see how long you can hold it before you actually land. And then apply that to the music as well. Um, so two really slow songs that you might be able to play with is Down So Low by Eddie James, which is 40 beats per minute, or uh, Miss Freddy's uh, A Losing Battle, that's also 40 beats per minute. And you can uh, experiment with these ideas of, of hear, first hearing the beat, clap it if you need to, tap it if you need to, and then try pressing off on the beat and landing after the beat. Um, also play with seeing what different body parts you can use to lag behind. Send one body part out and then add another. Um, so have fun with it and stay safe and thank you.